This is the regular car reviews first car meet. Uh, a few people knew there were two test meets uh, at the Skokie Racket and Fitness Center uh, a year prior to this, just to see who would show up and, and how we would handle it, and also how I would handle being the center of attention, right? Because uh, this is a, a new thing for me. So thank you to everybody who showed up. I'm so proud of everybody. Not a single burnout, right? No one drove crazy in and out. We got a great relationship going with Renee. Uh, she's the owner of this property. And we're going to go through everything that happened today. Of course, what happens at a car meet? You just stand around and you know, talk about cars. But... We have one guy showing up in the beginning with a uh, Volkswagen diesel uh, with a wonderful sticker on the front about diesel gate and everything like that. Oh my god, the whole thing's shaking. The filming machine is throwing up. Come on. Too many eyes are on it. Yeah! <laughs> Here was the smallest car throughout the day. Uh, it was a, uh, I think this is a Triumph Spitfire. And at some point later in the day, yeah, yeah, we backed it up and we, well, they did, uh, backed up the smallest car next to the largest car, which was uh, a Lincoln, I think that's a Lincoln Continental from like 1976. And the funny thing is, is that when they backed it up all the way, the entire car the entire triumph fits within the wheelbase of the lincoln this is a chevy malibu slash chevelle uh justin kramer it's not justin kramer's car but he uh he knows the difference between those sort of things i think that was brought by uh, some parents who uh their son wanted to come to uh the show but uh he was going into the service and couldn't make it so they came on their behalf got a nice picture with them Here's a Mark III Toyota MR2, and we got all three uh, uh, MR2s here. We got a nice picture of them. Still like the Mark III. I, again, I, I say anybody who wants a Toyota MR2 and they don't know which one they want, get the Mark III. Get the third generation one because it's essentially a Corolla. It's like a it's like an O2 Corolla underneath. Uh, what's what? How how much more reliable really do you want? Also, I apologize that this microphone sounds different. I'm not using my normal Shure SM58 that I use for the regular re reviews. I'm using the uh, little handy mic that plugs into my GoPro, but I just have the uh, microphone plugged into my uh, computer. So it, it doesn't have that kind of uh, uh, deeper low end that the, that the Shure SM58 does. Again, Lincoln Continental, what a beast. Man, that thing is massive. Oh, yeah, and there's a uh, Mark I. That was the same – I hope I get another picture of it. That was the same uh, AW11 that showed up that I did a POV on. That has the engine swap, and now is making like 270 of the wheels. A Miata. A few Miatas showed up. Thank you. Here's a modern Ford Taurus, not the SHO. And a few Festivas showed up. Ford Festivas. Uh, this one was a riot. Briefly in the back there, you can see the Cam Master. That showed up. The uh, the one with the, uh, uh, I think, the Tremec gearbox. Here is a Chevy Sonic, <laughs> a Toyota Camry. It's, it's funny how, like, what what is a regular car review's car meet? It's a, it's any parking lot. It's, it's just, it's just normal cars, but it's, it's, it's surprising to see the affinity that people have for the mundane. Here's a Magnum. And the Magnum had a story about uh, it, something breaking, something with the piston, and uh, how to replace the motor in that. This is a Subaru Crosstech that's been lifted. Small dog. It's Rudy. Aww. Rudy was the uh, became the star of the show. That was like her uh, his best day ever because everybody wanted to be here. Everybody wanted to be Rudy's friend. We will try to we will try to review Small Dog. 
Here comes a Mark II or S SW20 Toyota MR2. Uh, this one had a lot of work done, also done by uh, Prime Performance, the shop in uh, uh, Jersey. Yeah, and here's that wonderful shot where we get all three generations of the MR2 right next to each other. You can see a mini truck, a first gen Subaru Forester. In the back there, there is a uh, Jeep YJ uh, with the, I think, the Iron Duke four cylinder in it. Here I signed, I, I was asked to sign a car. So I signed this Subaru Forester. That was wild. I put stickers on my window so I can't see through it. There's the very large Fiat 500. I don't know what they're calling that now. Man, that thing's big. And I think that is a second or a third generation. I should know it by now. You know, that's a second gen Honda Fit. Ooh. Here is a stock white Miata next to, uh, I'm not sure which version of that E36 that is. I got to drive that Porsche Boxer there. Now, that had a flat six in it. I'm starting to come around on Porsches. I have a better opinion of them. Uh, this gentleman here, uh, I don't think knew about regular car reviews, but he saw my flyer at the gym and brought his Pontiac Catalina to it. So uh, this is, I think, 1961 or 1962, I forget. Oh, how about I just look at the sheet there? Survivor, bought from original owner, California, March 1, 2014. 190,000 original miles, still do a try to re maintain, not restore. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, that was a higher-end car, certainly, than the Falcon. Mmm, semi-see-through steering wheel. Here we have a Mustang on bags with uh, a uh, vinyl sticker on the roof that says, No, I don't drive it this low. It's also got the hella horns. That's uh, more of a Subaru thing. Here is a WS6. More Miatas. This is that SW20 again. There was... I would have liked to get a chance to drive this, uh, but we were running out of day, running out of daylight, or the day was ending. Um, that again was done by Prime Performance. There's a uh, bigger intercooler in that. There's the uh, YJ Jeep again, next to a Honda Civic with uh, antlers on the front of it. Ah, oh, yeah, the Iron Duke and antlers. Ah, oh, here we go. If honestly, if I had to pick a favorite here. It's this AE86, or rather American AE86. This uh, gentleman made a response video to me calling out American Corolla GTSs as untrue AE86s because they're really AE88. And he had this uh, good response, and, and I concede that, okay, yes. It's, as Jeremy Clarkson would say, as near as makes no difference, the AE86 and A88 are, yeah, yeah, the same car. Although this guy has a lot of work done to this. This has a black top motor, revs like crazy, drives great. And of course, uh, here's back to the opposite again. This is the Lincoln Continental. Man, that's sweeping, oh, speedometer, sweeping speedometers. And look, and, and look at this brake pedal. Look how wide this is. You can get both feet completely on this brake pedal of that Lincoln Continental. In case your brake booster goes, you need both feet to stop that beast. He has a working eight track player. He has meatloaf bat out of hell and it works. I can't play it because of copyright, but awesome. Here we have a, ugh, a infinity. Oh, what is this? It's a convertible. It's an infinity M what M30. There we go. You can just cheat and look at my own video. Team opposite lock. Bird. Both Justin Kramer and Judy Gunderman showed up with their Chevettes. You you recognize the white one. Uh, I'm sorry. You remember, you recognize the yellow one there. That's Justin's. Who I said had... I accidentally gave the original horsepower to Judy's, which was 23 horsepower. Uh, the yellow one, in fact, makes 23.4 horsepower. Since then, Judy... Uh, Worked on the engine, uh, tuned it a little bit, and now has that uh, red one up there at 60 horsepower. And I got a chance to drive it, and that 60 horsepower, that's plenty <laughs> for that. With no bolstering in those seats, that's that's a honestly, that's a little bit of a scary ride. Dan Solner showed up with Suki, 
the USDM S13. That thing immediately drew a crowd. People knew what that knew what that was the second it showed up. And more Miata talk that I have no idea what they're talking about. I like Miatas, but I don't think I'd ever really own one myself. Here is, I think, a 280Z, or is that a 240Z, with the SR motor in it. Awesome. Again, that's the uh, SW20 and that wild exhaust coming out the back. You're kind of stuck when you have an SW20, what, you're, what you can really do with uh, resonators and mufflers and pipes, because your motor's right there in the back. There's not a whole lot of room to put a big exhaust system, so you have to make do. So your mufflers or silencers tend to hang down like that. This is getting toward the end of the day. Some people were leaving. Again, big thanks to our caterer uh, who showed up serving everybody food. There goes Judy. I'm a sucker for 70s crap. Little Chevette's. Go, baby, go. There goes the Forester with all the stickers on it. Oh, here comes the... <laughs> Time to set sail on this bad boy. Look how long it is. It's like the hood and trunk are almost equal lengths. That's it. Oh, what? This is... This is a little bit of footage of uh, the, the septic man showing up with the two porta potties that we had for the show. Fitting, I suppose, that I end it with that. So thank you, everybody, who showed up to the RCR meet. Will there be another one? We'll talk. We'll, we'll find out. I'm so happy that everybody had a wonderful time. And also, imagine, imagine a car meet without a single burnout or any any – because that was my big worry that – Somebody would show up and do something stupid, but no one did. Imagine that. No one did. So thank you very much for showing up to everybody who showed up to the RCR car meet. Uh, glad you had fun to coming out into the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, to do this. And um, we'll see if we can uh, arrange something like this next year.